We're going to start with a very special gentleman. <clears throat> His name is Christopher Vaughn. And uh, so there he is. Hello, Christopher. How you doing? I'm doing great. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank awesome. You. Awesome. So j just, just real briefly. So his son, Dave, actually performed last week. Um, yes. But, you know, we realized, well, hey, you know, his dad, Chris, he plays music, too. And uh, you've been uh, playing music for quite a long time. Am I right? Since I was 10. Yeah, since you were 10. And how long ago was that? Uh, in what century are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a long time ago at any rate. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't want to be the one to say it, but yeah, this brother here, he's 79 right. years old. He is still playing. He's playing well, and he's doing it for the glory of God. So um, I, I find that very encouraging and... Uh, you know what? I, I just at, at this point I want to chat with you some, but but I should let you play a little at least start one song first, um, yeah, because we're really here to hear you, not yeah. me. So you, you want to go ahead and kick off and sure. share something? Let with me us? Uh, just tell you a little bit about this song. This particular song that I wrote is called "The Voice," and uh, of course everything that I write comes from the Lord, uh, whether it's in a dream or wherever it comes from. But this particular song. I was alone in the house. I had a home down in St. Simons Island in Georgia, and I was by myself in the house, and a voice came to me and it said, called out, Chris, Chris, as clear as a bell. Nobody was in the house, and it kind of sent goosebumps up and down my arms and back and everything else. So I looked around the house, there was nobody there, of course, and I sat down on the bed and I kind of, uh, I kind of, uh, just kind of took a nap, and when I woke up, uh, a melody had come to me, and I'm wondering to myself, well, where did it come from? It had to come from the Lord. So, listen, this is called The Voice, okay? And this is it. sounds so clear to me and it always sounds the same what do you want from me i wish wish that i could see well the days for me grow shorter and the years go flashing by so many things i want to do and things i want to try what do you want from me i wish wish that i could see in a dream a voice came to me with a lovely melody now i think i know just what you want what Set so many songs to me through the passing years they made us laugh some filled with love some sadly brought us tears what do you want from me I wish wish that I could see then I finally realized the Lord he was the key and the dreams he sent in the night were set for you and me. Now I think I know just what you want, what you want from me. That's it. Sorry, it took me a minute there to unmute. Uh, but yeah. by the way, yeah, so you may you may not hear that much applaud, but it doesn't mean it's not happening on, on these virtual <laughs> things. You know, people are clapping in places where you can't hear it, but they're definitely doing it. Oh, um, that's cool. And I'm already seeing some comments uh, that, that uh, people were really blessed by that. That was a beautiful song. Thank so, you. 
How how long ago? What what year was it when you wrote that song? Uh oh, it had to be at least. Um, you would ask me that question, wouldn't you? At least let me see. About eight nine years ago. Okay, okay. So relatively that. recent. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. But um, your, your musical history goes back a lot further than that. You want to just very briefly uh, give, give us a bird's eye view of that? Yeah, just real fast. Um, I came over from uh, Manchester, England. I started school right away at 10 years old. My dad bought me a ukulele. Uh, I started playing the ukulele. I entered my first talent show and won it hands down. I played a song by George Formby called Keep Fit. From there, I graduated to uh, the guitar. But I had a problem. I was playing four string chords. <laughs> I had a six oh. string guitar. But I did finally learn to play power chords and things like that. Well, well the tuning's different on a ukulele, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, any case, I graduated to a Martin guitar, uh, acoustic, and um, I learned a lot of new chords. <clears throat> I learned to really play the guitar on that Martin. And eventually, uh, Christmas on my 15th birthday, my dad bought me a Gretsch anniversary model with a Bigsby control, and I started playing rock and roll properly. Rhythm and blues. Mm. I'm a rhythm and blues man. I love rhythm and blues. Eric Clapton and uh, people like that. Um, I there we go. Right on. <laughs> well, yeah. He's probably, probably a legend, but I love him. But... Um, I started playing in college. I formed a band up there, and we played all around upstate New York. Um, and I really got got into the music business from there. Mm. I came back downstate and formed another band, and just kept on playing with bands and played at different uh, different functions and things like that. Mm. Um, when I got married, I kind of kind of grew away from it because I was so busy with business and stuff like that in the import business. Right. Traveling, traveling same thing, same thing with me. Yeah. I, it's really strange. I, actually, my wife passed away in 87 of, uh, over, over in cancer. And um, I started writing again on the piano, basically. And I moved down to uh, South Carolina. And onto Hilton Head and started writing even more. And um, finally, I, I had this lady, and uh, she was a southern gal, and we moved to St. Simon's Island, which I mentioned before, and really started writing a lot of music down there. Hmm. Uh, we eventually moved back up to um, Atlanta, and I joined a church there and started playing. And from there, uh, my son opened up a restaurant in Phoenix, and I came out here to help him. And I joined a church here, right around the corner. I, heard, I was walking by one day, and I heard them singing. And uh, I stopped in, and they asked me to join the choir. And from there, I started, <laughs> there you go. I started writing Christian music. All my songs from that day on were Christian songs and had the Lord in them. And, uh, got into the Christian uh, event. Very cool. Um, so I, I want to pick your brain more about that, but why don't you uh, share another song with us before we continue here? All right. I'll do that song that I'd I did. I'd love to hear another one. You know, the one, um, I hope you can hear my voice over it. Uh, it's called The Simpson. I was asked by the uh, choir director to write something for Easter to go with the choir. It was a 40-piece choir. We had a big Hammond organ. We had a praise and worship band. They're really good. So I wrote this. It's called The Simple Man, and it's just about Jesus. It's a song about Jesus. He can walk on the sea. He can make a blind man see. He can cure the lame and the sick. He can make a dead man live. Was he just a simple man?
sent by his father to set mankind free. Well, he loved us all like his own children, and he promised that he would come back. And he climbed up that old mountain, and he preached that sermon that was his last. Was he just a simple man like you and me? He was sent by his father to set mankind free. Well, we followed him to his death. Twelve men that were his very best. And he taught us to spread his word to the people who had never heard. Was he just a simple man like you and me? He was sent by his father to set my camp. Very nice, lovely, lovely. Just a simple little song, basically. Yep. Yeah, um, he he did keep it simple in a lot of ways, um, but he was off. He was awfully special and one of a kind as well, wasn't he? I would say so. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just so so now about your musical background. You mentioned Eric Clapton, which uh, uh, raised my antennas because he, oh. so. You know, I'm involved in Christian blues, you know, kind of, you know, blues rock with a gospel message. Right. And so it. I'll bet some of the early influences that I liked or stuff that you liked, Clapton was one of them, right? Who who else were you, were your influences back in the day? What, what if I told you, uh, well, of course, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones. Uh, right, I right. The Beatles are absolutely amazing. But, um, and they wrote some Christian stuff, you know. Um uh, of course, I mean, there's just about all the blues, all the old blues singers I can think of. Uh, yeah. Uh, when, we were in a, when we were teenagers, we used to go down to Manhattan to the city and go to Lower State, and we'd go to the rock and roll show. We'd get in for a dollar. We'd see every, every person you could think of. We saw the Drifters. We saw Chuck Berry. We saw wow. Bo Diddley. Um, Bo Diddley had a, a big... Uh, I used to love Bo Diddley. I just love the rhythms he used. Um, I'm not saying that he was all that Christian, but <laughs> he had some yeah. great stuff, you know. Oh yeah, and that cool guitar of his. The red one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the square shaped one. That that's th those of us who are into making cigar box guitars, we're we're all inspired by his, you know, what he did originally. I actually have one here. A cigar box. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I use some in a band, so I love that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 All righty. Well, what, 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 what else? Uh, what else uh, musically you got to share with us here? Um, just basically playing. Uh, I do a lot of open mics and things like that. I'm playing the church. Um, I write. I spend a lot of time writing, and uh, people ask me all the time, "Where do you get your ideas from?" Uh, it's not, you have to have an idea first for a song before you can write it. I mean, does the, they ask me, does the tune come first or do the words come first? Sometimes, sometimes the words come first, sometimes the tune, yeah. I can put the words. It, 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 it varies, so, doesn't it? it? Absolutely. So I, yeah, it's hard yeah. for me to say anything to them sometimes. So, but um, yeah. I, and the inspirations are totally random too, aren't they? The what? The the inspirations, right? They're they're random. Oh, the inspiration, yeah. Um, this next song I'm going to sing is called "The Smile." I originally called it "The Gift," but I'd already I'd already made that other song, and I called it "The Gift." Uh, this is an interesting story. Um, I was playing at a lounge, and I got finished playing three or four songs, and I got up, and this lady came running over to me. She threw her arms around my neck, and she said, "Chris Bourne." 
You have touched my heart and soul. I said, well, that's the nicest thing a musician could say, you know, have said to him. She said, you know, my husband passed away a couple of months ago, and uh, my friends have finally got me to come out to hear some music. And this lounge was, uh, it was a great lounge because the people that played there were real pros, and the music was really good. So um, I ended up thinking about this, and a lot of people, especially the church, said, Chris, you have such a great smile. And I thought to myself, I have a great smile. I never thought about that. There's only one person who can give you a smile and make people feel happy, and you know that's the Lord. So I decided to uh, sit down and put some words, and I wrote this song called The Smile. And uh, the last verse tells it all. Um, and it's about the lady that came up to me and all that stuff. So the next song is The Smile, okay? <clears throat> Any questions? No, no, it's all yours, brother. Okay. If there really needs someone today, was it the mother, the child that played? Was it the old lady that passed away? A small but precious the Lord. That smile that chased the blues away. I saw happiness and love that day. The Lord works in such strange ways. A little smile to brighten up your day. A little smile to brighten up your day. A little smile to chase the goes away. It makes you think of such good things. And all the hope it brings. So when you see a sad face, you know. Just smile love and try to make it go. God's love is in your smile that plays. And it will chase the blue. song lovely great um the next song is called as a matter of fact i never gave it a name so i just called it the lord's answer to a prayer I just mm. called the lord's answer uh the reason i wrote this song is um I, I i imagine everybody in their marriage or with a girlfriend have had a breakup at one time or another and uh it's been hard to mend whatever happened, but it does eventually, especially especially if you have the Lord on your side. And that's what this song is about. And um, it's called The Lord's Answer. Jeez, I'm playing a lot in G tonight. Okay. And a bar. Way too long, can you forgive a fool? This journey I've been sent on was the Lord's learning tool. He said, 
I'll show you another way A path into your heart and soul That others, they weren't the answer My way will make you whole I'm learning more each day I thought I knew my way But he has a plan for both of us In my prayers I've heard him say Now listen to me Listen to me clearly There's goodness in your heart I'll show you the reason you both had to part, and in time you'll come together. In time, I'll see your love, and patience will heal your hearts with my love from up above. And he said, I'll show you another way. It's a path into your heart and soul That others, they weren't the answer My way will make you whole Make you whole Yeah, well dance. You're beautiful Well, thank you so now over the years have you done mostly acoustic stuff or did you do electric at some no, point no, too no i just started this um oh goodness i started it when i joined this particular church because well when i was playing with the band i played electric guitar you know i played um, um mm. yeah i played the electric guitar i'd always played the electric guitar and i really started messing around with the acoustic and I got such you know the certain chords that I love there's a um, you can play a d7 and you can play a d7 two different ways two power chords but they sound they are both d7s and I started to learn a lot more about the guitar and a lot more different chords and stuff like that yeah uh, and there's certain things you can play on the electric guitar, and there's certain things you can play with the acoustic guitar, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, you can get a, a rock and roll feeling with electric guitar. We can with an acoustic guitar, but not yep. so much. So, oh. I am... Um, by, by, by the way, Chris, speaking of electric and acoustic, please wave and say hello to my buddy Brad Marsh, who just came online and is checking in, uh, because he, he is a kindred spirit with you and me about the music and guitar stuff. <laughs> uh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good to yeah, see you. he's out there. So anyway, okay. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I saw him no, popping up, and I want to make sure... Uh, I like to meet... Yeah, no, no, but but you're right. I mean, yeah, I, I mostly do electric, but there's times that acoustic is just the right one. You know, yeah, that, that but, gets the right. And feeling. you know what it is? Uh, then, if you're going to play electric and you're going to practice, then you got to go plug it in, go find a, or, you know, something to play it with, and uh, with the good. With the yeah, acoustic. right, right. Yeah, just, yeah. The acoustic up. is definitely easier sometimes. I know. Uh, the, uh, All right. The next, so uh, the next song is called "Again the Gift." Um, I feel that, and I tell everybody when I sing this song, um, everybody. The Lord gives everybody a gift. Uh, and it's unfortunate that some people don't realize it. They're great teachers, great mothers, great orators, or whatever. But they're given a gift. Uh, I was given a gift, maybe at a late age, to write some of this stuff and play it. Um, and I feel privileged, um, like I feel privileged to be able to sing them on the Red Room. So this is a song about angels. Uh, I always ask people, um, how many of you people believe in angels? Or, sp or some people call them spirits and things like that. I definitely believe in an angel. And um, because of many things that have happened to me, but this is called, I should really call it the angel. <laughs> <laughs> 
And it goes. I have an angel that looks over me. I've always wondered who it could be. Sent from heaven to watch over me through all of my bad times. It was the key. Well, we've heard of angels flying close to the ground. In the dark of the night, they don't make a sound. And they've called out my name in the dawn of the day. Sent by the Lord to show me the way. Now that I'm older and along in my years, that angel stood by me through joy and my tears, sent by the Lord as a heavenly gift, I always near by me to give me that lift. Now we all have an angel that looks over you. Don't ever think that is not true. In the dark of the night, you must be aware of the whispers and the prayers that are born in the air. Well, I have an angel that looks over me. I always wonder who it could be sent from heaven to watch over me through all of my bad times. It was the key. Short, but it gets the message. Short and sweet. I love it. It's beautiful. Now, I well, you know, know, if these songs are kind of short and quick going, maybe you need to do one or two more just to <laughs> fill up our time here a little bit. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, this is a song I wrote for, um, for my son when he was a little baby. Um, mm. I wrote it in two different keys. I just wanted to... I'm back to G again. <laughs> so it's called Christopher's Lullaby. And this again is a short. I wrote it for him and for, for his mom. And it's my, my uh, youngest son. His name, is, of course, is Christopher. And it's a lullaby. Sweet baby Christopher, killed in your crib. Your day's been so busy with toys in your midst. Mommy's been near you to help you today. She's always nearby you to kiss teardrops away. Sleep, baby, sleep, baby, sleep, baby, Christopher. Daddy stands over you with oil in his eye. Wondering how tall you go now, such a small fry. He'll teach you to play the games all small boys play. Growing up bright and strong every way. Well, sweet baby, sleep baby, sleep baby Christopher. So many things I must teach you, my son. These are your years for laughter and fun. Sleepy head three dreams are yours through the night. And thing will bring you laughter, sunlight. Sleep baby, sleep baby, sleep baby Christopher. A simple little lullaby. Very lovely, lovely. Yeah. But by, by the way, there, there's comments here. There, there's some very uh, glowing comments. So, um, just real quick here. Um, the other Liz, I'm not sure who that is, but she says very nice voice. Um, nice job, Chris. Brad commented and said, "Yeah, we want more." So I think he seconded. Uh, you know, throwing a couple more songs in. Uh, oh. <clears throat> 
All right, I'll give you. Anyway, um, um, people, the the point being, people are being blessed. We're really enjoying what you're doing today. <laughs> okay, all right. This is a song a I wrote. Deal, yeah. um, it's just a fun song, um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's called "Heaven Bound." I'm on my way to heaven. There we go, folks. Like that. <laughs> All righty. I, brother Chris, you've uh, you've uh, done a wonderful job here, folks. You've been listening to Chris Vaughn. Um, any, any last word you want to throw in before we uh, move ahead? No, I just want to thank. I want to thank Red for being so patient with us, and uh, I, I really appreciate that. And uh, I just um, thank you all, and thank the Lord, and. Um, what he does for me in my life and uh amen all right well we appreciate you being here um i i appreciate your perseverance uh continuing to play music um and, and not stopping uh because that's kind of what i want to do so so it encourages me to see folks doing that um folks again put put some love uh, into the comment boxes for brother chris here thank you again boss